This video is brought to you by Nano, creators of virtual reality tools for immersive molecular visualization and interaction. Follow the link in the video description to download Nano and explore molecules yourself. So I mentioned previously that I would talk about the details of protein structure later. And so here I kind of want to introduce the levels of protein structure. And there are four levels. They are primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure. And let's just go through the basic idea behind each one and what each one refers to, starting with primary. So primary structure refers specifically to the order or to the sequence of amino acids that are linked in the polypeptide chain. So it's not just about which amino acids are there, but the actual order in which they're connected. Okay, that's what primary structure refers to. Cool. And of course, there's more details. We'll talk about that stuff in, we'll talk about more on each of these in their own separate videos. Okay. Secondary structure. Secondary structure refers to uh, the ordered patterns or 3D arrangements on localized regions of the backbone of the polypeptide chain. You'll notice that backbone here is capitalized. And that's really important because when people think about secondary structure, they typically think about alpha helices and beta pleated sheets. And they're absolutely right to think that. And they also think about hydrogen bonds. Again, absolutely right to think that. But the hydrogen bonds specifically are between the amide hydrogens and the carbonyl oxygen atoms. And those atoms are the atoms of the backbone of a polypeptide chain. Okay, this does not include the side chains because there are higher, there can be hydrogen bonds between the side chains or the R groups of amino acids, though that's not described or referred to by secondary structure. That instead is tertiary structure. Okay. So tertiary structure refers to the overall folded 3D structure. Okay, what does it look like overall? Um, that's also called the quote unquote native conformation. And almost always when it comes to tertiary structure, the key thing that I want people to think about is side chains. So interactions between the side chains of the amino acids. Because when a polypeptide folds, it's inevitable that side chains will be interacting with each other. So what what are the interactions that are there and what's going to be holding this 3D structure together? And of course, there are hydrogen bonds, there's the hydrophobic interactions, there's electrostatic interactions, all of which are non-covalent. And then there's the covalent bonds um, uh, that can occur between side chains, specifically um, disulfide bridges okay, between cysteines. Okay, tertiary structure also refers to the relationships between secondary structures. So that if there are multiple alpha helices, multiple beta pleated sheets, and they're all interacting one way or another, um, to you know, as part of a full 3D um, structure, um, that's included in you know, it is, is referred to and described by tertiary structure. Um, and the involvement of any prosthetic groups you're talking about tertiary structure, one example of a prosthetic group is heme. And a prosthetic group is any non amino acid component of a protein. So heme's got like a little iron and a bunch of carbons and nitrogens and rings and stuff. Um, I'll probably show that at some point when I talk about hemoglobin. But typically, when I think when, I, when people think of tertiary structure or when I want them to think about tertiary structure, I want them to think about the interactions between the side chains. Okay. Um, and last but not least is the quaternary structure. Okay. And quaternary structure refers to the functional association or interaction of or between two or more polypeptide chains or subunits. Long story short, if you got a protein with two or more polypeptide chains or subunits, that protein has quaternary structure. If it does not have multiple side chain, sorry, multiple um, subunits or multiple polypeptide chains, then it does not have quaternary structure. Okay. So that's kind of the general idea for all of these. We'll talk about more of the details in the following videos. Okay. I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching.